A great pall is cast over the multiverse. Elish Norn in the nightmare of New Phyrexia grows more real with each victory. Her agents and praetors secure ambitions that intimate dark designs. A storm rages and a tide of malevolence gathers strength. New Phyrexia pulls hard on its tethers and wishes to burst forth, spreading its corrupting glistening oil across the multiverse and inundating all planes in brilliant perfection, uniting them as one. When last we left off on the tale of New Phyrexia's rise, Elish Norn struck a grievous injury to the multiverse's defenders with her attack on Dominaria. The green-aligned Praetor Vorinclex confiscated mystical Tyrite from the world tree on Kaldheim. Blue-aligned Jin Gitaxius experimented on Kamigawa and discovered how to complete a planeswalker. Red-aligned Urabrask learned of the angelic substance Halo on New Capenna and its dangers against glistening oil. And Black-aligned Shieldred initiated the second Dominarian invasion, defeated, then kidnapped Karn Silver Golem and killed planeswalker Jaya Ballard. Check out part one if you haven't already where these events are discussed in all their detail. Now, the group of planeswalkers known as the Gatewatch and their allies stand astonished. They've been struck with crippling defeats and tragic losses. The threat of New Phyrexia greater than they could have imagined. But the multiverse isn't without hope. A desperate plan is hatched to counteract Elish Norn directly at her seat of power and cleanse the planes of Phyrexia's affliction. Ten planeswalkers, guided by the leadership, martial prowess, and past experience of Elspeth Tyrell, volunteer their lives to infiltrate New Phyrexia. They intend to unleash the powers of a filigree replica of the Golgothian Silex, an artifact infamous for its destruction, on Norn and her host to utterly destroy the plane before Phyrexia's ultimate goal is realized. It's a risky play with equivocal consequences, but the hero's only option. Will it bear fruit, or is it too late to stop the march of the machine? Let's find out. But before we begin, I'd like to thank Aura for sponsoring this video. The multiverse of magic is filled with wonder, excitement, knowledge, and creativity, and the internet is much the same. But it's also filled with danger. Anyone can find anything on the internet, including personal information. Your name, your email, home address, phone number, passwords, and even your family are all accessible at the touch of a button because of data brokers who sell your private information to scammers, spammers, and telemarketers. You need protection, and this is where today's sponsor Aura steps in. Aura is the new standard in digital security and offers comprehensive protection of private information, finances, and technology. Aura monitors your emails and passwords to see if they were involved in a data breach or exposed on the dark web and gives you recommendations on what to do. But they take it beyond identity theft, equipping you with antivirus and anti-malware services, privacy assistance and smart vault monitored cloud storage, all for little cost to you. Plans are competitively priced and start as low as $12 a month, and you can use my link at aura.com slash lorebrarians or scan the QR code on the screen to begin a free two-week trial and see how much of your info is being shared. Aura has almost every internet safety tool you'll need all inside one easily accessible app. They stop data brokers in their tracks and keep your privacy private. So let Aura do the hard work and give you peace of mind online. Start your free trial today at aura.com slash lorebrarians, link in the description. 10 Dauntless Planeswalkers, each with personal and emotional ties to Phyrexia's malfeasance, waste no time in their counterattack. As mentioned, the born-again knight-errant Elspeth leads the team that includes psionic ninja Keito Shisuki and the wandering emperor of Kamigawa, ghost assassin Kaya Kassir, Coppercoat, outcast and naturalist of Akoria, Luca, the elvish prince Tyvar Kell of Kaldheim, core lithomancer Nahiri and elf druid Nissa Ravain of Zendikar, mind mage Jay Spellerin and Queen Vraska of the Golgarion Ravnica. They planeswalk to New Phyrexia and discover immediately that they're walking into a trap. Elish Norn has predicted the hero's moves and prepared New Phyrexia's defenses to mitigate each planeswalker's strengths. A distortive bubble envelops the plane and disrupts the group's walk through the blind eternities, instantly separating and discomfiting the band which is summarized in the flavor text of Planar Disruption that illustrates the wanderer's separation from Kato and reads, New Phyrexia's planar defenses scattered the planeswalker's strike team on arrival. Elish Norn knew they were coming. Upon alighting on the plane, the band are met with abject horror. The Mirrodin that was is no more twisted beyond recognition into a metallic hellscape suffused with Phyrexian corruption. 
an inferno of nine nested spheres, each more grotesque, more terrifying than the last, stands in their way. As they plunge further into Norn's dominion, damnation swallows them, festering dread and corruption stain their hearts. This is the first glimpse of New Phyrexia since Mirrodin's fall, and the plan itself has succumbed to completion. New Phyrexia's nine-sphere design is an homage to the original artificial plane and domain of Yagmoth centuries ago. Each sphere is distinct, with a unique role in Phyrexia's grand purpose, seen in Phyrexian Atlas. The spheres crawl with corrupted monstrosities, vigilant sentries, and all manner of evils. The fate of Mirrodin's survivors, seen in cards like Encroaching Mycosynth and Anoint with Affliction, is terrible as the resistance is systematically captured, assimilated, and indoctrinated into Phyrexia's ranks. In the eye of this swirling storm sits Elish Norn, who has united Phyrexia's conflicting factions beneath her forceful leadership as Mother of Machines. The culmination of her genius and ambition is finally revealed, for deep within the heart of the plane, an invasion weapon incubates, prepares to unleash its tendrils across the blind eternities, and disrupt the very nature of reality. Realmbreaker, a Phyrexianized iteration of Kaldheim's world tree, germinates from the Tyrite sample stolen by Vornklex within the seed core and Mycosynth gardens. Once mature, the invasion tree will pierce the veil between planes and open the multiverse to infection by glistening oil, assault by millions of Phyrexians, and completion and grand unification. In a word, cataclysm. This is a reality that mustn't congeal, and for the Planeswalker Strike Team, Realmbreaker becomes their primary target. But first, they must unite. Flung to various reaches and spheres, the heroes begin isolated. Kato, the Wanderer, and Nahiri happen upon an embattled Tyvar Kel fighting Phyrexian patrols. They dispel the attackers, but not without loss. The Wanderer's unstable Planeswalker Spark loses its tether to Phyrexia and sends her hurtling from the plane and Nahiri suffers at first what seems an innocuous wound while fighting off Phyrexian attacks. The group are met by the Mirren resistance and conducted to a safe house where they join company with Kaya, Elspeth, and Jace. The Mirren partisans are led in their efforts by Malira, an elf immune to glistening oil, and by Koth of the Hammer, Planeswalker, hero against Phyrexia, old friend to Tyrell, which we see illustrated in the art of Resistance Reunited. While they relive past camaraderie, the heroes are apprised of the current situation and resolve to infiltrate Phyrexia's core, intent on detonating the filigree silex at Realmbreaker's roots. The Mirans revive and refit the Planeswalkers, who then descend through the first layers of hell by passing through Phyrexia's outermost spheres, guided by Kotha and Malira. Nahiri's wound grows more serious. It's become infected and corruption quickly takes hold of the Lithomancer. At this stage, Malira could cleanse her, but it would incapacitate both for several days. Nahiri forgoes treatment and defiantly continues. Time runs short. Armed with resilient Hexgold and supplied with drafts of purifying Halo to best mitigate Phyrexian plague endemic to the plane, the heroes trudge into the Black Sphere, known as the Dross Pits, where they are confronted by factions of Phyrexians already engaged in conflict with another. Greed rules the pits, and ambitions blind those who thirst for power. Shieldred's realm is a vile land where seven steel thanes fight for tentative supremacy. Several of the thanes have united with the red praetor Urbrask in outright rebellion against Norn's rule. Their insurrection drains resources and demands attention, allowing the team to skirt by largely uninhibited. Meanwhile, Luca and Nyssa Ravain find themselves in the dangerous wilds of the green sphere known as the Hunter's Maze. They're attacked in the artificial forests by all manner of monstrous horrors of metal and flesh. To defend himself, Luca instinctively forms a bond with a Phyrexian beast. Though it grants him control over the monster, his bond with a corrupted creature poisons Luca's own mind. His thoughts are quickly overcome by deafening cries of Phyrexian completion. The Planeswalker's presence alerts Florinclex, Green Praetor, and Keeper of the Maze, who emerges in wild rage to subdue the interlopers. By this time, corruption has spread across Luca, whose flesh merges with the putrid metal of the Phyrexian to whom he is bound. United as one in body and mind, Luca, to Nissa's astonished horror, is now a completed agent of Phyrexia, seen in Luca bound to ruin. 
Unable to fight off her ally and Vorinclex, Nyssa flees deeper into the maze, hunted closely by the transformed Coppercoat. The group in the Dross Pits now makes their way to Sheoldred's Colosseum, where they happen upon Vraska, who had been flung to this lair in isolation upon arrival. The arena is littered with petrified corpses of fallen Phyrexians, but the onslaught proved insurmountable for the solitary Vraska. Grievously wounded, on the brink of death, the bleeding Gorgon is quickly attended by Jace, whose love for her is matched only by his present concern for her life. Flitting in and out of consciousness and anticipating the end, Vraska insists Jace flee with the remaining planeswalkers before new waves of relentless Phyrexians storm the arena. But he's unmoved. For Jace, the shock of losing someone so dear weighs heavier than his obligation to the mission. As he attempts to ease Vraska's passing, her countenance abruptly changes. A smile spreads, and a sting lashes out at the Mind Mage. Vraska had been corrupted by glistening oil, and her transformation is now complete. Seen in the card, Vraska betrayals sting. And in the flavor text of Vraska's fall, which reads, the dull creeping pain of Phyresis curdled in Vraska's blood. She knew as soon as it took her, she would betray everything, even Jace. Betray him she does as the wound she inflicts carries with it the Phyrexian contagion. We see this play out in the illustration of Phyrexian Arena. Aghast at how completely and swiftly his love has been turned, Jace is left with no choice but flight, knowing well that in a short time his own mental fortitude will be tested as the glistening oil works to dominate him. Hunted by an inexorable foe, with few avenues for escape, and now with two members of their party afflicted, the planeswalkers fear they will succumb to the enveloping hell around them. Nahiri's passions burn. Her fury boils. She knows she can't resist the contagion much longer, but she can buy her party time and earn their escape. The Lithomancer feels herself flagging, which we hear in the flavor text of Thrill of Possibility. As the infection spread, Nahiri's thoughts grew tangled. She needed to protect what she loved from Phyrexia. Or maybe only Phyrexia could protect what she loved. Desperate to make her mark, to make amends and make devastation, Nahiri calls upon the immense power at her disposal to crack the sphere's foundation in explosive retribution. This act is illustrated in Nahiri's sacrifice, which reads, Nahiri's last free breath became a defiant roar as she tore apart Sheoldred's Colosseum. In the wake of the magmatic torrent, the planeswalkers find themselves in a lower sphere, having fallen through the torn dross pits, but Nahiri has vanished. With Jace still afflicted, the party has no time to mourn. They make their way through Norn's Basilica and the Mycosynth Gardens uninterrupted. They descend into the very heart of Phyrexia, the depth of hell, and approach the Seed Core where they witness the awesome horror of Realmbreaker for the first time. Its size incomprehensible, its power profane, its branches crawling with millions of invasion ships prepared to bring Phyrexian glory to the multiverse. At the base of the tree, they find corn in pieces, the Silver Golem's hope equally shattered. Koth and Malira stay to revive the fractured Planeswalker, while the rest proceed into the Seed Core with the Silex. Here, they're confronted by twisted visions of the past. Tybalt, a devilish anarchist who caused much destruction to Tyvar's home plane of Kaldheim, and a Johnny Goldmane, true friend of Elspeth Tyrill, who has now been lost, bar the way. Both have been corrupted beyond reason or recognition, and both must now be stopped for the mission to succeed. Elspeth and Tyvar engage them in combat, freeing Jace, Kaya, and Kato to enter the core. The brutality, the personal and emotional weight color this fight deeply, which we see in Tyvar's stand, whose text reads, When they write songs about this battle, I will make sure your name is forgotten, devil. In complete devotion, where Johnny says to Elspeth, Elspeth, my friend, the multiverse has answered my prayers to bring you here so that I may gather you into my pride and forever protect you. While steel and words are exchanged, Kaya, Kato, and Jace arrive at the base of Roundbreaker, intent on unleashing the filigree Silex to wipe clean the multiverse of new Phyrexia. But they are too late. Their setbacks against Norn's forces allowed Phyrexia to initiate the first steps of invasion. 
Already, portals have opened to the blind eternities, through which the invasion tree's sinuous tentacles extend, and connect dozens of other planes to new Phyrexia. Descent tears at the walkers. Kaya and Kato fear the Silex wouldn't be contained any longer, but extend to the worlds beyond through Realmbreaker. Millions of innocent lives would be obliterated, a price too high to pay. Jace asserts it must be done. The planes, already at risk of corruption, are necessary sacrifice to cauterize the infected multiverse. But can Jace's reasoning be trusted? Infected himself, the corruption quickly twists his mind. The argument between them turns physical, but Jace conjures illusions to gain the advantage. In a moment immortalized in the card Bring the Ending, Bellerin pours his disgust for Phyrexia, his grief for Vraska, his anguish of past mistakes, and fear of completion into the Silex, emotions that supercharge the explosive device. The flavor text reads, Kaya watched in horror as the illusion vanished from her hands. Jace held the real Silex and had activated it before Phyresis claimed his mind. The fate of billions hangs on a breath, a moment before Cataclysm. Without warning, a triumphant Elspeth returns and thrusts her sword unerringly through Jace without hesitation. She reaches for the Silex and her next action is given to us in the illustration of Vanish Into Eternity, whose text reads, Faced with a blast that would level not only new Phyrexia, but also dozens of innocent worlds, Elspeth consigned it and herself to the nothingness in between. With Elspeth gone, Tyvar, Kato, and Kaya stand in confusion, in shocked horror. Elish Norn finally reveals herself, and the Mother of Machines is accompanied by now-completed members of the strike team. Nissa, Nahiri, Luca, Vraska, and a revived Jace stand on Phyrexia's side. And now for Norn's crowning moment. Using Nissa's ability to communicate with and direct Realmbreaker, Elish Norn launches the invasion she has long been preparing. In the card All Will Be One, the conquest of the multiverse begins. Dejected, exhausted, and in fear for their lives, what remains of the Planeswalker strike team flees Phyrexia. They lost. Norn gained. Phyrexia stands at the precipice of glory. Dark roilings reverberate through the multiverse. Insidious warnings reveal themselves on multiple planes that something is amiss. Pernicious signs of imminent danger darken the skies of worlds oblivious to new Phyrexia's power. We see this in cards like Tarkir Duneshaper, whose illustration reveals the Phyrexian symbol in Tarkir's sands. The same is witnessed on Theros in the illustration of Portent Tracker, whose flavor text grants insight into what will soon unfold. In the days before the invasion, the symbol of its perpetrator appeared in strange places all across the multiverse. Across myriad planes, the Phyrexian symbol emerges and the denizens feel the initial subtle effects of glistening oil's corruption. Then, in a massive shockwave, deep gashes tear through the fabric of the blind eternities on display in cards like Karsus Depth Guard and Aetherblade Agent. Completely unaware as to their purpose, countless worlds do little but stare in amazement. Soon, infection takes hold. Oil falls from the skies, swells from the oceans, or emerges from the earth, twisting not only minds but warping the landscape into new Phyrexia's vision. In Glistening Deluge, we see the plain of Akoria drowned. The text reads, As oil began to pour from Akoria's crystals, some monsters developed strange mechanical mutations. Others were simply pulled under while Thornwood Falls depicts Eldrain's metallic transformation. In a pivotal moment for the history of the multiverse, Elish Norn commands Realmbreaker to activate. Countless writhing tendrils, each adorned with thousands of warships and millions of Phyrexians, unfurl through the dark portals in the sky, tethering new Phyrexia to the known realms and bridging the blind eternities. This is illustrated in the card Breach the Multiverse, in which Norn states, all worlds will know perfection. In a heavy, breathless moment, billions stand astonished. Thus begins the March of the Machine. Countless worlds are plunged into madness as denizens fight twisted forms of another and battle invading Phyrexian monstrosities bent on completion 
in a struggle that envelops the multiverse. Cataclysm is displayed in the cycle of battle cards depicting valiant efforts to stave attack, and even once mortal enemies unite across planes in an effort against Phyrexia. As this unfolds, Tyvar, Kato, and Kaya return to Dominaria with dark tidings and the failure of the mission. Chandra, utterly distraught by Nissa's transformation, can't accept defeat and argues an assault on New Phyrexia is the only way to stop invasion. Assisted by the Dryad Planeswalker Ren, Chandra alights on Phyrexia, and with Koss's help, the pair plunge into the nested spheres of hell to reach Roundbreaker. This is illustrated in Coming in Hot and the card Into the Fire, the flavor text of which reads, The rest of the Gatewatch retreated. Chandra and Ren went in blazing. To ease their passage, Koth, the Mirans, and the heretic praetor Urbrask launch a distracting revolt against Norn's forces. Their progress is halted near the Seed Core, with Nyssa Ravain's appearance. Chandra is at a loss for seeing one dear to her transform beyond redemption. We see this reunion illustrated in traumatic revelation. Unwilling to raise fiery arms against Nyssa, Chandra allows the completed walker to strike at Ren and rip her from her host tree, which severely weakens the Dryad. Meanwhile, the Resistance suffers heavy casualties. Koth is beaten back, and Urabrask is captured, then disassembled by Norn, seen in the card Merciless Repurposing. The attack falters before it gains wind. Norn's ambitions grow more tangible by the moment, and in a broader scope, the inexorable Phyrexian tide washes over much of the helpless multiverse. Across planes, we are witness to the consequences of defeat and implications of a Phyrexian future. Norn's right hand Atraxa crushes New Capenna and its sources of Halo. The gods of Theros twist into monstrous abominations as their supplicants are corrupted. Invasion forces Lalo Eldrain's Court of the Realm. Kamigawa's metropolis is inundated by glistening oil. Kaldheim's world tree is reduced to smoldering ash. The devastation is endless. Phyrexia is triumphant, the plains tremble. But in the bleak abyss of hopelessness, a flame kindles. Beyond Norn's reach, beyond space or time, two forces gather strength. In the blind eternities, Elspeth Tyrrell awakens to find herself at the crossroads of life and death, existence and oblivion, immortality and permanence. An ethereal voice belonging to the ancient divine planeswalker Sarah presents Tyrrell with a choice and demands a response. Remain in the space between reality and fade into nothingness, or return to the fray, assume the mantle of conviction, and assist those most in need. Illustrated in the art of moment of truth and hinted in its text, on the precipice of eternity, Elspeth made a choice. The fight would not end without her. Elspeth girds for battle, once more brought from death and reborn as a resplendent archangel the transformation on display in her Planeswalker card, Archangel Elspeth. A second force for good grows, trapped for the moment out of time. After the malfunction of the temporal anchor during the events of Dominaria United, Teferi was flung from the time stream and landed on the shores of Zalfir, a continent which has for centuries been phased out of existence, isolated from the multiverse by Teferi's own hands during the original Phyrexian invasion. The Chronomancer is once more united with his ancestral homeland to find that although the multiverse has forgotten Zalfir, Zalfir hasn't forgotten the horrors of Phyrexia and its people, led by the Sadar Jabari, have with singular purpose prepared for an eventual conflict. Centuries have sharpened their skills and steeled their hearts. Tens of thousands of peerless knights stand at the ready, seen in cards like Marshal of Zalfir and Zalfir and Lancer. They only await a moment a chance to bridge the gap and escape their temporal imprisonment. Norn, unaware of the agitating tides against her, basks in momentary glory as no force or plane in the multiverse can oppose her. Her vain glory becomes her undoing. As she has Chandra and Ren within her grasp, a blinding flash of righteous fury announces the arrival of Archangel Elspeth, which we see in the illustration of Angelic Intervention, whose flavor text reads, Elspeth shone like a sixth sun, inspiring hope in the Mirans and terror in new Phyrexia. With Norn distracted and engaged by Elspeth, 
Malira and the Mirren Resistance charge toward Realmbreaker, carrying injured Ren amongst them. A dire moment beautifully illustrated in Storm the Seed Core. Their goal is to bond Ren to the Invasion Tree so that the Dryad might cleanse Realmbreaker of corruption. The tide turns against Thorn on Phyrexia, and Elspeth's presence unleashes a salvo of divine angelic activity that bathes the multiverse. Angels descend from the heavens on countless embattled worlds, meeting holy justice upon Phyrexians. The mystical powers of Halo extend to all planes through Realmbreaker's interconnections and prove a well-timed boon to depleted forces. We see this play out in cards like Boonbringer Valkyrie and Surge of Salvation whose flavor text reads, No Miletian had ever laid eyes on an angel, but when protective halo flooded the multiverse, they knew a divine blessing was at hand. While Phyrexia is retreating far afield, Norn herself struggles against Elspeth's newfound powers. The Praetor is no match for the Planeswalker, who in a climactic moment thrusts her halo and lightning-infused blade straight through Norn's heart. Elspeth's smite depicts the Planeswalker, so long a victim of Phyrexia, secure glorious retribution. It reads, Elish Norn screamed as the light pierced her. Her nightmare had become flesh. Norn's fall convinces the other Praetors that she's lost control, and the unity that once bound them dissolves into factional infighting. At the base of the invasion tree, the Dryad successfully bonds, which we see in the card Ren and Realmbreaker. Ren immediately burns the corruption eating away at the tree, but not without cost. To carry out such a task requires self-sacrifice, as Ren immolates Realmbreaker from within, the outcome of which will surely kill her. But the card Ren's resolve highlights her conviction. With the invasion tree under her control, and before the flames consume her, Ren uses its powers to pierce the veil surrounding Zalfir and once more tether it to the blind eternities. This is given to us in the card Transcendent Message, whose flavor text reads, Ren reached out to Teferi through the blind eternities, and an impossible connection flared across the vast emptiness. After centuries in isolation, after generations preparing for a threat that never materialized, Zalfir is called upon to fulfill its duty and returns bristling with armaments and filled with bloodlust for Phyrexia. In the bedlam that surrounds failing new Phyrexia, a realm gate portal is opened from which Teferi, Jabari, and thousands of Vizalfirans pour forth to engage Norn's metallic host. We see this in the card's invasion of new Phyrexia and inspired charge. Across Phyrexia, power is crumbling, control is slipping, and the planes of invasion are fighting back. On Theros, Afara, god of the polis, crushes the completed gods and grants godfire to her mortal flock. On New Capenna, Atraxa's fall depicts her defeat and the city resists invasion. The wandering emperor slays completed planeswalker Tamio to end her misery and leads victorious samurai forces. One by one, the once great praetors are killed and their factions scattered. Karn, Silver Golem, happens upon a grievously injured Elish Norn. He sees in her, in Phyrexia, and in invasion, a mistake of his own making. In rectifying vindication and with a solemn heart, the Planeswalker kills his creation, seen in the card Mirrodin Avenged, whose flavor text reads, You were my mistake. I will forever bear the weight of your horrors and of your end. Though the Mother of Machines is no more, Phyrexia remains a threat so long as one drop of the glistening oil remains to continue the glorious work. Ren, burning from the inside out, finds a solution before death consumes her. She uses Realmbreaker's metaphysical properties to transpose Zalfir onto new Phyrexia, while instantaneously casting Phyrexia to the oblivion of non-existence once forced onto Zalfir. This is given to us in the illustration of Seal from Existence. Without Norn's control, and with its connection to new Phyrexia severed, the glistening oil's corruption halts. It's rendered harmlessly inert which we can see illustrated in the card that bears its name, the flavor text of which reads, As new Phyrexia faced out of existence, glistening oil all across the multiverse was cut off from its source. The completed invaders ceased to function and crumpled to the ground. With her play made, Ren and Realmbreaker are both consumed in fire. Her sacrificial pyre saves the multiverse. 
across the plains, the Phyrexian juggernaut falters. The mechanical monstrosities that rely on oil, corruption, and putrefaction have ceased, their fuel and life force mitigated. The blind eternities breathe a collective sigh as their future is spared. The mother of machines lies dead, her seat of power and what crumbling ashes of Phyrexia remain banished to the temporal imprisonment. It's a time for celebration, for hope, for mourning. In the wake of the conflict, both Nyssa Ravain and Ajani Goldmane are subdued and captured by the Mirans. They're brought to a wounded Malera who agrees to sacrifice her own dwindling life to revert completion and cleanse the walkers of Phyrexian corruption. We see Ajani's transformation in the illustration of Negate, whose flavor text reads, Teferi gave them time, Karn gave them a chance, but it was Malera who paid the ultimate price to free Ajani from Phyrexia's grasp. Teferi walks through the ash and smoldering remains of Realmbreaker for any sign of Ren, to whom both he and Zalfir are forever indebted. Unfortunately, the hero has been utterly consumed. But as Teferi kicks up fallen debris, he uncovers a strange seed. Though Ren is no more, she's been reborn as a mystical seed from which the dryad might return if nurtured properly. Overcome with joy, Teferi delicately plants the seed in Zalfir's fertile earth. This is given to us in the card Seed of Hope, which depicts the moment of planting and reads, Ren had given everything and asked for nothing. She deserved a monument, but rest in a quiet meadow is all she would have wanted. Though the plains stand victorious over Phyrexia, much changes in the aftermath of war. The story of New Phyrexia has developed over years. Its intricacy, its scale, its reach have touched myriad worlds and lives. What are the outcomes as the dust settles? Norn's hubris in constructing Realmbreaker pushed the properties of the Blind Eternities past the breaking point. With so many paths and portals weaving through reality, the multiverse has abruptly responded to the insult in an unforeseen strike. The Planeswalker Spark, integral to traveling the space between realms and significant to many, has shattered and severely weakened. In the illustration of Spark Rupture, we see countless planeswalkers feeling the effects, losing their sparks, and falling from their lofty heights. It reads, Phyrexia was defeated, but the repercussions of the invasion rippled through the blind eternities. It's impossible to say how many retained their sparks. We see several desparked characters printed in the set, including Nyssa Ravain, Karn, Sarkhan Vol, Nahiri, Tyvar Kell, and others. These individuals have been denied the limitless opportunity they once enjoyed in the multiverse, and have now been tethered to reality. But as one door is slammed shut, a window opens. The omen paths and portals created by Realmbreaker remain active, tenuously binding several planes together across the blind eternities. This allows many beings, not just those possessed of a spark, to travel between other planes of the multiverse, albeit in a limited capacity. This no doubt will produce unforeseen and possibly deleterious effects. We see Nyssa and Chandra walking an omen path in the illustration of Open the Way. From the rubble of disaster, an era of reconstruction and renovation is born. It sweeps the survivors of invasion towards a hopeful future. On Arcavios, Strixhaven University is rebuilt from its ruins, the school once more beacon for aspiring mages, seen in campus renovation. A new seed of the world tree germinates on Kaldheim. In time, it will restore balance to the ten realms on display in Cosmic Rebirth, whose text reads, When all the stories find their ends, a new one shall begin. New Capenna recovers from destruction brought by Atraxa's forces and rebuilds the city in all its glamour. The return of Capenna's angelic host generates a struggle for control of the city as the angels turn their ire against the demonic crime families. We hear this in the text of Metropolis Reformer. With their ancient enemy vanquished, the angels of New Capenna turn their eyes to their former captors, demons. The Sun Empire of Ixalan begins salvage of its famed golden city of Araska, clearing rubble left by Cataclysm. On Zendikar, Nahiri awakens to find herself cleansed of corruption but drained of much power, including her planeswalker spark. She finds it contained within a hedron but the artifact grows increasingly brittle, and in the card Reckless Handling, we see it fracture, her spark forever lost. 
The text reads, The relic shattered, and something in Nahiri broke as well. Distraught by her loss, and disgusted by how much she had done to corrupt her home plane, Nahiri realizes planeswalkers are a bane to Zendikar. All they have brought is pain and suffering. She resolves to defend her home and prevent other walkers from damaging it further. Though new beginnings start, much loss, tragedy, and danger still fills the multiverse. The humans of Akoria have lost their great city of Dranith and are vulnerable to predation by the plains monsters. We hear this in Dranith Ruins with states, Like Orn before it, Dranith was reduced to a playground for Akoria's monsters. Eldraine mourns the death of the High King and Queen. The realm has been shattered, its unity spent. It's now at the mercy of Eldraine's wilds and a mysterious slumber that washes over countless, which we see in the card Wicked Slumber. What force acts behind this mystical sleep remains obscure. The mighty pantheon of Theros has been dealt a crushing blow. A large number of its gods were completed and slain. Afara, ever sheltering, stands as bulwark against evil and font of divine inspiration for the plains mortals, whose faith is now thrust upon her shoulders. Across the multiverse, remnants of Phyrexian machines and the scars of invasion yet linger. Though inert, glistening oil stains memories and landscape. Its presence binds survivors to relive painful moments. We see this illustrated in Filter Out, which shows an Ixalan merfolk mitigating the substance. Its flavor text reads, The glistening oil had been rendered inert, but planes wouldn't begin to truly heal until every last drop was purged. As long as a trace of the horror remains, no plane can truly move past the march of the machine. And though Phyrexia is cast into temporal purgatory, it hasn't been destroyed. Its monsters, its metal, its oil lie beyond reach, but for how long? It's a tantalizing prize for one with the ambition to harness its latent powers. So ends the new Phyrexian story, a saga years in the making that saw the rise of an interplanar threat the tragic loss of heroes, innocents, and even planes, the return of threats and allies old and new, and the ultimate defeat of Elish Norn. The blind eternities are forever changed in the aftermath, sparks shattered, omen paths open new gateways of opportunity, the status quo is upended, and many lives are irreversibly altered. Questions and uncertainties fill the multiverse. What new forces will grab power in the existing vacuum? What heroes and villains will rise? And what of the fate of those walkers and planes that had been corrupted but not cleansed? Only time will tell. Thanks so much for watching and listening, but now I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on the planes discussed, on Elish Norn and the March of the Machine, and what you think will unfold in the aftermath, as well as suggestions for future videos in the comments below. And if you're a fan of Lauren's storytelling, be sure to subscribe to the channel, listen to the podcast, or check out the blog, where content is uploaded frequently. A huge shout out to all of my patrons over on Patreon. Your support means the world to me and helps the channel grow and improve. If you're interested in becoming a lore luminary for access to me, early video drops, written scripts, and more, check out the link below or head to patreon.com slash the librarians to learn more. Until next time, go forth and explore the lore.